Hello and welcome again to my video series. This video is about <clears throat> treatment or treatment design, trap design, and the frequency response of these kind of traps. Um, and this is in response to your many comments and questions. So um, I hope I address quite a few of them here. As I described before, <clears throat> especially for a small studio, when you have a a, a small room and uh, you, you are limited in dimensions so you you don't want to take up all the room in traps but there's the catch you you have to sometimes you have to you have to use quite a bit of space sometimes if you're if you have a room that is uh, a gypsum board walls or you know thin partitions the base escapes through those those walls at their resonance which can be from 60 to 100 hertz and so very low trapping is really unnecessary with those you, you know of course you don't have soundproofing but sometimes it's fine you know it depends on what you're doing uh but if your room is brick or block or cement <clears throat> that uh that has a lot better soundproofing but it introduces another issue and that is the necessary trappings to meet the normal recording studio criteria. If you look at my um, B&E criteria, it's on my resources page, just download it. I describe the different um, techniques <clears throat> and, um, and, and the criteria. I have links in that paper to uh, quite a few documents and describes a, a little formula to determine what your maximum RT60 should be in a critical listening room. And that's according to uh, several uh, several societies like AES and <clears throat> and uh, and others in Europe, etc. Et um, so to obtain that at least that uh, uh, minimum at maximum of RT60 in this in a critical listening room, you have to do a certain amount of trapping, and so that means <clears throat> that for a concrete block room or concrete or or um, brick or whatever type of structure around your room, you're gonna, you gotta use membrane traps because try to get that down that low with broadband trapping, they have to be so deep and they can't actually be that deep. They have to have air cavities in them and wave guides and all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, so here, let me show you an example of a membrane trap. Let's look over here. This is, um, <clears throat> well, let's look at the model for example. Here's the model. And I'm going to put it in conceptual. This is my AutoCAD, by the way. Um, it's thinking, it's thinking, it's thinking. It's thinking, it's still thinking. There it is. Okay. So <clears throat> these guys are made like this. Just basically a big box. And you can't cut them. You can't get into them because they are sealed. Let's remove the fabric on the front. I'm going to take the fabric off. And I'm going to take... There's, there's, there's a rock wool layer or, or um, what do you call it? A, uh, <clears throat> whoops, I just deleted one. <laughs> this is tricky sometimes. I'll tell you what, I'm going to hide it instead of freeze the layer. I'm just going to hide that, that, that layer that has the um, fabric on it. <clears throat> we got, I put a, a broadband surface to all of my membrane traps, and this solves the problem of them being reflective. So here we're going to make this uh, rock wool or rigid uh, fiberglass disappear. <clears throat> and then, wait a minute, it's thinking. <laughs> it does that every time I hide something. Um, and then this is pink fluffy here. We're going to hide that. Now next we ha we're looking at more fabric. So I put fabric on the front. The, uh, the the absorption material, then another piece of fabric, and this keeps the fabric about three quarter inches away from this membrane. It looks like a solid sheet of steel or something. It's not. It's I normally use an MLV, or we construct a limp mass out of a, a rubber sheet and steel. So and there's that rubber mass gone, that MLV gone, and then we see more fabric. Hang on, there it is, right there, and I'm gonna hide that. There's my more pink fluffy, and we hide the pink fluffy, and voila, we have an empty box. See? 
our uh, our membrane uh, structure, it, I use steel. I use a just a, a 20, 20 centimeter or three quarter inch uh, angle iron. Okay, I screw that all to the to the frame. And if you'll notice as well, we have braces in here. Braces going across the front because you, you want to always want to build a trap so people will lean on them. Or can lean on them because they will. <laughs> you don't want to fall fall through something or break something. Uh, so you make it so it's braced. You can add more braces if you want. Doesn't affect the, the the workings of the acoustics up here. Neither does it back here. You don't need so much. Just in the middle is fine. In the back, um, this works as a cavity uh, and the mass together. The the distance to the back from the, the limp membrane determines the frequency along with the mass of the lip membrane and so and there there that's how we do ours i'm gonna i'm gonna get a top shot here just a minute um like this and like this and go back in there and i'm going to hide all the wood <laughs> get this wood and get this wood and you can see put it back in conceptual you can see the screws and the bolts of how <clears throat> the, the frame is supposed to be put together. Okay. Okay. Get in here so you can see this. So these screw into the, into the box and then they're bolted together. That's the, I put hex bolts on there. What the heck, you can use anything you want. And nuts on the other side. Yeah, let me move it over here so you can see. So. There's the bolt and the nut. You tighten them all up and you clamp the membrane in this space right here. Okay, I usually, I usually use the, the heaviest membrane available because it's, it's even with a huge trap, say you take a 16 inch deep total deep depth of a trap, that's gonna get down to 28 hertz with a two, uh, a two pound membrane, two pound per square foot. That's quite a bit per square meter. I have to calculate, uh, remember what that is. I think it's like 10 or so. Anyway, so I will carry on this. I will carry on this conversation in another video, and we'll discuss more about how uh, how other traps perform and the frequency response, etc., and some typical trapping that I use in small rooms. I'll talk to you soon. Be sure to subscribe, and see you then.